Hi, my name is Sarah Lawson and today I'm going to show you how to make my wallet. So to start off with, uh, I want to point out a few things to you about the die. All three of the pattern pieces that you'll need to cut out with on the die have the blade on just three edges and that means we'll need to place the fold of the fabric on the edge with no blade for all three of the pieces. Okay, so let me show you how to cut the fabric out with the die. We'll start with the interfacing first. So the foam interfacing is the thickest piece that we'll need to deal with. And I always like to rough cut the piece vaguely a little bit bigger than the place on the die. And so I'm gonna use my scissors and just cut a piece out of interfacing. And since the foam is approximately an eighth of an inch thick, you'll just wanna stick with these two layers of the interfacing for cutting out the particular pattern piece. Okay, so I have my foam folded in half and I'm gonna place the folded edge on the edge where there's no blade. And you might find it more helpful if you have washi tape or painter's tape at home to go ahead and put a piece of tape over there just so you can clearly mark where there's no blade. But I'm just gonna go ahead and check both of the edges of that particular piece. And the, the folded edge of the fabric is lined up right there. You'll need a cutting pad on the bottom and also on the top of the die you want to run them through the machine at a slight angle. Okay, so there's your piece cut out from interfacing and to cut out with fabric, you'll just use the same process. Again, you'll want to rough cut the fabric slightly larger than the, the shape of the die. And you can layer up to eight layers of quilting cotton fabric through the machine. And if you look on your packaging, you'll notice there's a cutting list of all the pieces that you need to cut out from your fabric and interfacing. If you've lost your packaging, you can find the cutting instructions at Sizzix.com. Now that you've cut all your pieces out from fabric and interfacing, you'll need to attach the interfacing to the fabric using manufacturer instructions. So I have this Pellon ShapeFlex interfacing attached to my lining pieces and I fuse those to the wrong side of the fabric. And with the foam interfacing, I've machine basted the foam to the wrong side of the fabric. And if you have a foam interfacing that's fusible, you'll just fuse that instead. After you've prepared all of your pieces with the interfacing, the first step is to sew the two medium rectangles right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. After I've done that, I'm going to turn the fabrics right sides out and press. After you've pressed, you'll top stitch the top edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You'll repeat the same process for all pairs of the medium rectangles. After you've finished the top stitching on the medium rectangles, we'll be assembling them for the inside of the wallet. So you'll have two rectangles on one half of the wallet and two on the other half. To place the rectangles on the lining piece, we'll be measuring down from the top edge one inch and one eighth and drawing a line straight across. Make sure when you're marking your fabric that you use either a water soluble pen or marker or chalk. Okay, you'll place the first rectangle at that line that you drew and you'll stitch the rectangle in place on the side and bottom edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. After you've sewn that first rectangle in place, you'll measure down from that same top edge one and seven eighths of an inch and draw another line straight across. With that second line that we've drawn, you'll place that second rectangle. And again, you'll sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you've got that stitch down, you'll trim any overhang of the rectangles by flipping to the wrong side of the lining curved rectangle. And this is what the finished piece will look like. So you have a decision to make right now. With both of the rectangles, you can leave as is to hold cash or receipts, but if you'd like to create this side for holding credit cards, you'll finger press the fabrics in half to create a crease, and then you'll stitch right down that crease through both of the medium rectangles, and that'll create space for holding your credit cards. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create the holder for the pen in the center of the wallet. So right here, this yellow fabric is a nice little slip pocket for holding the pen. So to do this step, you'll need two of your small rectangles. 
For my example right here, I'm gonna use the orange fabric for the pen holder, and so I'm going to fold that fabric right sides together so that both of the short ends meet. I'm gonna sew across the short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. After you sew this end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you'll turn the fabric so that they're right side facing out. Press the fabrics and then we'll top stitch both of the short ends using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. After that first small rectangle is top stitched, we'll be placing that piece on the center of a second small rectangle. After that small rectangle is placed, we'll be stitching both of the raw edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now let me show you how I like to trim down zippers. I normally like to use longer zippers than are necessary because I like to trim down and eliminate two areas. So on the area where the zipper head is, I like to eliminate that front end because it kind of creates a gap. And on the other end of the zipper, there's a metal zipper stop. And I always like to make sure I cut that area off because that metal zipper stop will break a needle. So to trim down the zipper, first you'll want to back, back stitch a few times back and forth. That's called bar tacking and that creates a new zipper stop. So I've gone ahead and done that already. I've sewn back and forth a few times as you can see with the blue stitching. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim that metal zipper stop off. For this project, we'll need a zipper that measures 16 inches long and I'm going to take my ruler and from the end that I cut off, I'm going to mark 16 inches. After marking, I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to create the second bar tack just to the inside of the markings that I made and I'll just be sewing back and forth a few times, but of course you want to make sure your zipper head is within that area that you'll be sewing and cutting off. After you create that new bar tack, you can go ahead and cut at that line that you drew. And now your zipper is exactly 16 inches long and ready to sew into the project. For the next step, we'll be sewing one of the exterior fabric small rectangles to the right side of the zipper. So I've gone ahead and done that already. As you can see, this is the right side of the zipper and the fabric is right sides together with that zipper and I've sewn that short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. After that step, we'll follow up with the lining small rectangle. We'll place it right sides together with the exterior fabric and so that zipper will be sandwiched in the middle. After aligning the short ends, we'll flip to the wrong side of that first fabric and we'll stitch right on top of the previous stitching. After sewing those two fabrics, you'll press the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together and we'll top stitch a quarter of an inch away from the finished edge. Now we're going to attach the remaining short end of the small rectangles to the opposite end of the zipper. So here's my exterior fabric and I'm going to place that right sides together with the right side of the zipper. Again, I'm going to sew that short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The final step for preparing the zipper is to attach the lining fabric to the wrong side of the zipper. And this step might seem a bit counterintuitive because things might seem a little bit twisted, but just trust that if your fabrics are right sides together that you'll be fine. So I'm bringing up my lining fabric to the wrong side of the zipper. And again, we're gonna sew on top of the previous stitching that we can see from the wrong side of the exterior fabric. After sewing, you'll just flip the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together. So it'll look like this. And then we'll complete the final top stitching. So we'll sew this end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. After that top stitching is completed, we'll be creating sort of a little envelope for that little piece of foam that I had you cut out. And so to do that, we'll just be sewing one of the raw edges of the small rectangles wrong sides together using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Grab that piece of foam interfacing and slide it in between both of the layers. 
Okay, now we'll seal that foam interfacing in place by stitching that remaining raw edge wrong sides together using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Different handbag zippers might be slightly different widths, and so if that's the case with yours, as you can see over here, I have a little bit of overhang of the fabric past the width of the zipper tape, and I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim it so that the fabric is even with that zipper. So now we need to create some quarter markings on both the zipper and all of the curved rectangles, and that will help us install the zipper evenly on both the front and the back of the wallet. So to do that, first I'm gonna take my completed zipper and I'm gonna fold that small rectangle so that both of the short ends meet. I'm gonna take a fabric pen and mark on the end of the fabric over here, right across the middle of the small rectangles. And then I'll keep that zipper folded flat and mark the opposing end. Next, with those two markings that you just made, you'll bring them so that they're right on top of each other. So I'm aligning the markings that I have on the actual zipper tape with the markings that I have on the middle of the small rectangles. Keep the zipper folded flat and mark both ends. Okay, after marking that zipper, you should have four quarter markings. We'll also need to create those quarter markings on all four of the curved rectangles. So here's my exterior curved rectangle, and I'm just gonna fold it in half so that the raw edges meet and mark both ends. And I'll do the same thing by folding it in the opposite direction and marking both ends. So as you can see from the wrong side of the fabric, I have those four quarter markings. You repeat those quarter markings on the remainder of your curved rectangles. Now that the zipper and all four of the curved rectangles are marked, we're going to attach the zipper to one of the exterior curved rectangles. So if you have directional fabric, you'll wanna make sure that you're pinning that small rectangle to the bottom edge of that curved rectangle. I'm having the exterior fabric right sides together with that exterior fabric on the curved rectangle. And we need to align the quarter markings. So I have a quarter marking right here on that small rectangle, and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned with the quarter marking on that curved rectangle and pin it in place. And I like to use wonder clips just because when things get thick with the fabric layers, um, the wonder clips hold lots of layers of fabric and pin pins tend to bend. So wonder clips are always a good option for bag making. I also find it helpful to unzip the zipper while pinning and sewing that first edge of the zipper in place. And if you feel more comfortable, just leave that zipper zipped before you pin just to make sure you don't have things twisted. Okay, and then go ahead and pin the remainder of that curved rectangle all the way around. Okay, now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing me machine and sew the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so here's the little an eighth of an inch high clips that I made through both the zipper tape and the fabric. And as you can see, it was a little bit easier to sew just because those clips were there. Okay, after you've sewn the zipper to the exterior fabric, we'll be attaching one of the lining pieces. I find it helpful to go ahead and pin that loose zipper tape in the middle of the fabric and keep it out of your way. Okay, we're gonna attach one of the lining pieces and we want the bottom edge of those credit card slots to be on the same end as the edge with the small rectangles. We're gonna flip the fabric so that they're right sides together. And again, we need to use those quarter markings to line everything up. So use the quarter markings on the wrong side of the lining to match up the quarter markings on the wrong side of the exterior. Just go ahead and pin all the way around. Now when we take this over to the sewing machine, we're actually gonna flip to the wrong side of the exterior because you can see the stitches from when you first attached the zipper and we're gonna sew directly on top of the previous stitching. The only thing when sewing the lining in place is we need to leave an opening approximately four inches large just so we can turn everything right sides out. So I'm gonna leave my opening right over here on the side at the bottom of the credit card slots.
Okay, after sewing that lining fabric in place, we'll just want to make little clips again about an eighth of an inch high through any of the curved edges. Now it's time to turn the fabrics right side out through that opening that you left in the lining. Okay, I'm going to remove the pin that I have in that zipper tape. And this is what it should look like so far. Now you'll be repeating the same process to attach the exterior fabric to the other long edge of the zipper. So I've gotten that sewn in place already. And after that's done, you have one final lining piece. And I'll show you how to pin that in place right now. So sometimes it's helpful to sort of fold that first half of the zipper out of the way. And remember, we're going to attach the bottom side of those credit card slots to the edge where that small rectangle is. So I'm going to place the fabric so that the right side's together. And as always, we need to line up those quarter markings. So I'll pin those in place first. Okay, as we did before, we're going to flip to the wrong side of the exterior and we're going to sew directly on top of the previous stitches. Except remember, we need to leave that opening in the lining. So leave a four inch opening on one of the long edges of the lining. As before, we'll be leaving little an eighth of an inch high clips through all of the curved edges. Okay, now it's time to turn everything right side out through that hole in the lining. Okay, you might want to use a turning tool to poke out the corners. And then the last step is to grab the two pieces of Peltex that you cut slightly smaller than the pattern template. And so we'll be inserting one piece of Peltex in each half of the wallet. And I find it helpful to fold that Peltex in half and slide it in. And then you can go ahead and spread that Peltex flat. Okay, give everything a good press with your iron and you'll also want to press those two openings in toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to finger press those for now and it's helpful to put some wonder clips on those openings. We're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around the outer edge of each half of the wallet using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we'll sew this half and then we'll go ahead and sew the second half and when we sew those the openings will be sealed closed and the wallet will be finished. Now that the top stitching is complete, the wallet is finished and ready to fill with your credit cards, cash, and the wallet will fit most cell phones, which is really nice. A couple other tips for making this project, you can make it to hold makeup brushes, pens or pencils, other art supplies, so it really can fill multiple purposes and it's a great gift, teacher's gift a quick project to put together and has so many uses. I hope you enjoy making it.